Headline number four, Poshmark is leaning into live stream to promote resale for the second year in a row. According to Chain Storage, the online resale site, which rolled out Posh Shows, a live stream shopping solution designed for fashion resale in the U.S. and Canada in April 2023, is hosting its second annual Secondhand Sunday, which it calls the, quote, only national holiday dedicated to supporting secondhand sellers and circular fashion during the peak holiday shopping season, end quote. Taking place on Sunday, November 26th, Secondhand Sunday is focused on encouraging the purchase of pre-owned goods for holiday gifts. This year, Poshmark is launching a lineup of shopping live shopping events supported by the Posh Shows live stream feature, including, Anne, are you ready for this? Yes, uh, gifts tell galore. me all about them. All right, I know, because you're going to be all over this, actually. I a will. gifts galore Posh Show on November 16th, an upcycling Posh Show with shopgoodwill.com on November 19th and 26th, and, of course, the bevy of live streams that will occur on Secondhand Sunday again on November 26th. So, Cassie, my question for you is this. Live streaming, are you in or out? And how are you at AM CRG advising clients around the concept? Live streaming is is very interesting to me. You know, it's basically today's version of QVC. I will say, I will admit I loved QVC as a child, which probably concerned my parents about my future shopping habits, but wow. I loved it. <laughs> All right. Um, but I think, you know, live streaming is very category dependent. So this isn't going to work, I think, for a lot of categories. I think there are a few okay. highlights where, you know, we can see potential there. Beauty is one of them. So, you know, with the success of Get Ready With Me on TikTok, people want to sit there and watch someone use different products and also being able to interact with the brand about why they're using a product. Um, I think live streaming actually could be a, a great success there. For single retail brands, I don't necessarily think that people want to watch someone walk around. They'll go to their website, they'll filter to exactly the type of product they're looking for. So, mm -hmm. and then specifically with Poshmark, this is not how people are necessarily shopping for Poshmark. You're looking, they're selling one individual item. There's not the scale there to make it successful. So I don't really see it. I think there's more potential in the live streams with things like the Amazon Live. So the Amazon influencers, you know, I know there's there's so many influencers who has regular programming. So, you know, Paige DeSorbo, who's a, a Bravo, Liberty, Summer House. Wow. She has a regular you know, Amazon Live every week and she's recommending her products that she wants. People are already looking to her on, on her Instagram, on her TikToks for what she does. So her live streams are great and there's potential for brands to partner with her potentially because it's going through a variety of products, but I don't see people tuning in and shopping just for, you know, one brand. Wow. It looks like we hit your wheelhouse on this one. God, great <laughs> guest for this I, week. Yeah. Great guest for this week. And what do you think? You got it. Do you agree with Cassie? Anything you change in what she said? Anything you disagree yeah. with? I mean, I, I think Cassie's like hitting on all the right notes for this. Um, I, I guess I don't see the harm in doing this, especially on the Poshmark platform, because one of the worst things about buying something on Poshmark is that you're dependent on the posher, who's not always the best photographer, um, showcasing an item. So it's much simpler from somebody who shops consignment frequently for me to see something on form, for me to see somebody walking around in an item. And I do think that there's a capability within Poshmark to, you know, or these live Posh shows to say, this is my item in size 28, this, this pair of jeans, but then here's the same item or similar items across the board that are also for sale. But it kind of gives you a better sense of like what that product looks like, moves like, and feels like. Um, and I, I think this is even, even to get even more granular, I think this is a really great tactic that some of our local consignment shops here, especially the luxury consignment shops have started to use because it, it creates demand for that product. It is allowing one of our local consignment shops here. They're selling out of products much faster now mm. that they started doing Instagram reels and doing some of this live shopping um, to showcase this product instead of like waiting for people to come in and consign, they're able to do sales online. So it's like opening up a new channel that is really difficult or has been historically really difficult for one-off thrift items to be able to be sold. That's an interesting angle. And yeah, it basically is enlivening the local businesses uh, as a right. general concept, potentially on second. But to, yeah, to Cassie's point, not for every every single brand not going to yeah. work <laughs> right yeah it is category specific i yeah. think there's also I, the other point i'd make i think there's a time frame specificity here too mm -hmm. like i think the because we you and i actually both we participated in best buys live stream last week right yeah. yep. um it was like on thursday night and we we sat there and we watched it and i don't know my opinion is like 
it can be an additional revenue stream for, I would actually say for most brands during the holiday period. Uh, because it's a fun yeah. way to interact. It, feel, it makes you feel closer to the brand. Like I was feeling close to the brand. I was feeling close to you as we were like writing messages back and forth during the live stream. But you know, my big takeaway is, and you guys have hit on this, is if you're going to do it, you have to do it on your own platform, which is what Best Buy didn't do. I think they're probably thinking through that in the long run, but you got to do it on your own platform. And then that way customers can go there. They can see the content. It can live on in perpetuity and you can play the content until the items basically run out, which I think is a great point when you think about it in that context of what you said with the local consignment shops too, Ann. Mm -hmm. But Chris, any final words here? No, I, I, I agree with, with what you guys have said. I just, it's, it's, it's interesting to me. And I, I just wonder if there's any way that like vertically integrated retailers could use this in like a different way. Ooh, um, I like know, where you're I, going with this. I, I just think through like all the challenges folks have had recruiting and, you know, retaining really good store associates. And I'm just wondering if there's some sort of play on this where you could expose your best store associates, give them a platform to evangelize and serve, you know, hundreds of customers a day versus, you know, 10 to 20 customers a day and give them a really different avenue to earn actual commission because that's one of the toughest things in physical retail today is it's really hard to track what sales associate sold you what i just wonder if there's any um runway there yeah that's freaking great you got my mind going too why don't you take a page out of timu and Sheehan like we had on the show last week too and go direct from the factory with some of these live streams like here's the product immediately coming off the line who wants it? We'll send it to you. You got to wait a little bit longer, but you're being the first ones to see what's coming, which isn't going to arrive in stores, you know, three to four months down the line. Oh, wow. Yeah. 